George Harrison once said, it's all in the mind. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about a time in my life when I prayed with all of my heart that George was right, that it was just all in my mind. My story starts out this past year when my husband Hector and I took a trip to visit family at a farmhouse in Armenia, Colombia, in South America. The farmhouse is nestled in these bright, beautiful, lush, green hillsides of Colombia, where plantains, coffee beans, and oranges grow absolutely wild. It's true paradise. So maybe you're wondering, okay, if it's such paradise, then why would you be praying with all of your heart that is all just in your mind? Mr. Toastmaster of the day, distinguished and fellow Toastmasters, let me clue you in. First of all, in the light of day, things tend to have more order to them. But at night, that order can quickly turn into chaos in the mind of someone like myself, somebody who is unfamiliar with life on a farm in Colombia, where the bathroom is located outside of the house and the windows have no screens on them. On our first night, Hector and I lay under a gigantic mosquito net that I purchased from Amazon and lugged with, with us on this trip. All was pretty cozy under that mosquito net. I felt relatively safe and secure until the middle of the night when I needed to use that outdoor bathroom. I didn't want to wake Hector, so flashlight in hand, I climbed out of the safety of the net and I dashed off into the dark Colombian night to that outdoor bathroom. Did my business as quickly as I could and I dashed back. And thankfully I arrived unharmed. Mm -hmm. So I pointed my flashlight at the mosquito net and right there, right where I needed to climb back in was a huge beetle, a really, really big beetle, a beetle the size of two of my thumbs. It was clinging to the net. So naturally I screamed and that scream woke Hector up thankfully, because he came to my rescue. Now he was in a deep sleep, so he grabbed the beetle and he tossed it to the ground. And then he plopped back on his side of the bed and within seconds he was snoring again. So that was his solution, just toss it to the ground and be done with it. Yeah, so I lay there hesitantly for quite a while that night, thinking about that beetle on the ground sharing space with me. And of course that got me thinking, well, okay, what else is sharing space with me too? And I swear, just as I had that thought, all chaos broke loose. I felt a tug at the far end of the mosquito net at the edge of the bed. On my side of the bed, my side, I felt a mosquito, I, I felt the mosquito net tug. And then a second later, something grabbed my foot. I grabbed my foot. So I yanked my foot back and I just hugged myself, sitting there like a stone. I was so afraid to move. I had no idea what lurked in the darkness. What had just grabbed my foot? Meanwhile, Hector is snoring gently, breathing in and out, completely clueless that there was a foot stealing creature at the edge of the bed lurking in the dark shadows. <laughs> And if that was not already bad enough, suddenly I heard clackety clack, clackety clack, clackety clack. Oh my God, I pictured this creature from the wild overgrown jungles of Colombia huddled in the corner of this room, planning its attack on me. I waited it out. And eventually those clackety clacks stopped. At which point I curled up into a ball and I prayed for daylight. Eventually, after an outrageous amount of time, the morning finally came and Hector woke up, refreshed and rejuvenated from his wonderful night's sleep. <laughs> he opened up his mosquito net, climbed out of it. And then all of a sudden I heard it again, clackety clack, clackety clack, clackety clack. Now in the light of day, I was braver 
because things tend to have more order. So I opened my eyes, a crack, and I landed them upon my foot-stealing critter of the night. Meet Lucas, a family dog. I imagined him to be a blood-sucking critter with sharp teeth, planning an ominous attack against me in the middle of the night, when all he wanted to do was to sneak into our bed and curl up next to us, snuggling through the night. So the moral of this story is, friends, the next time you, saw, you find yourself fretting over what could be, do yourself a favor and think about what really is. Because more times than not, as George said, it is all in the mind.